This is the Mahabharata Podcast, Episode 3, A Fishy Beginning. Vyasa, accompanied by students who knew the whole Veda and its branches, entered the sacrificial sadas of the king Janamajaya and saw him sitting there, surrounded by as many sadasyas as Indra is by the gods, and also by the lords of many countrysides, whose heads had been anointed, and by experienced priests, equals a Brahma, seated on the spread-out grass of the sacrifice. Sir, said Janamajaya, you have been a witness to the deeds of the Kurus and the Pandavas. I want you to tell me about their acts. How did that breach arise between these cousins? And how did this great war come about, which was the destruction of so many lives? Tell me all, for you, blessed Lord, are the one who lived through it. Thus, by request of the king, the sage Vyasa instructed his student Vaisampayana to recite the Mahabharata. Vaisampayana tells us that Vyasa spent three years daily working on this composition, and also that anyone who retells it, and also those who listen to it, attain to the realm of Brahma and become the equals of the gods. Now that's a good reason to stay tuned into this podcast. So here's what Vaisampayana tells us. The story begins with a king named Vasu. He has all the usual good king attributes. He's loved by all, favored by the gods, etc. But he also has a rather compulsive love of hunting. In the early parts of the book, in the early parts of this book, there are a number of examples where a king's love of hunting gets them in trouble. Already in the last episode, we heard of how King Janamajaya offended a hermit with a dead snake while he was out hunting. In this case, King Vasu's beautiful and charming wife gets herself all dolled up for a night out with her beloved, but he decides that he needs to go hunting. While out on the chase, Vasu still had his mind on the lovely lady waiting for him, and he somehow has an accident. His seed bursts out and falls on the ground. Not wanting anything to go to waste, he scoops it up, puts it in a leaf, and asks a passing bird to deliver it to his dear wife. Fortunately for us, we don't find out what Vasu intended his wife to do with it, because the delivery bird got waylaid en route by another bird. An aerial battle ensued, and the precious packet dropped into the Yamna River. It just so happened that a large and hungry fish was swimming by at that moment, and it ate up King Vasu's seed. Ten months later, a fisherman caught this fish, opened up its belly, and found a pair of twins, a boy and a girl. I guess the boy was alright, because he found himself adopted by King Uparikara. We never hear from him again, so we'll assume he lived happily ever after. The girl, however, was not so lucky. She smelled of fish, so it was decided to leave her to be raised by the fisherman. This girl's name was Satyavati, and other than her peculiar odor, she had beauty and character and every virtue. As Satyavati grew older, her father put her to work running the ferry across the river. One day, while ferrying pilgrims across the river, she picked up the sage Parasra, who immediately wanted to make love to her. Ever practical, the girl pointed out that they were in the middle of a river with holy men lining the banks. Undaunted, the sage called up a thick fog to provide cover. Since there was no longer a danger of the sage being shamed by the act, Satyavati told him that she was a virgin, and what would this act do to her reputation? But our lusty sage had an answer for this too. When he was done with the act, he told her, she would still be a virgin. He also granted her a wish. So she asked him to change her fishiness to fragrance, which he did. From then on, she had the scent of flowers and could be smelled a mile away. Satyavati conceived a child, and on the same day gave birth to a son, none other than the author of this story, the sage Vyasa himself, fully grown. The boy got up, stood before his mother, and told her he was going to be an ascetic. As he set out to depart, he told her, When you think of me, I shall appear to you and will be at your service. Vyasa's full name is Krishna Dvaipayana Veda Vyasa. He is the first of four characters to be called Krishna in this story, and they say that he was so called because he was very dark complexioned. Krishna means black. I believe Dvaipayana is the name of the island on which he was conceived, and Veda Vyasa means divider of the Vedas. Vyasa is known to have been the sage who took the original Veda and divided it into the four holy books that we have today. Apparently, it was in these early years that Vyasa undertook the editing of the Vedas. Our storyteller Vaisampayana took a break at this point in the story, and so will I. We've introduced two important characters in this story, and next time we'll meet the mighty Bhishma and see how his extravagant fidelity sets the entire tragedy in motion. Thanks for listening.